So let's talk about what is the topic for today, World Breastfeeding Week, uh, why there's a need to step up breastfeeding the modern mother today because of the job they do because of uh, how they want to keep their bodies and not mess themselves out keep a certain class i know are not interested in breastfeeding again the babies but they are interested in breastfeeding other people we'll talk about that today we'll not shy away from that julius summer is dietitian and nutrition project lead at my health cop thank you very much for joining us Thank you. Is it not true what I just said? Um, about the child part or about the... Oh, you heard what one. I said. It's not about the child part. <laughs> I'm talking about the fact that women are not interested nowadays to breastfeed. Even if they do, they do it to some time, two months, and they leave it. Meanwhile, there's like six months exclusive breastfeeding that must be done. What I said, is it not true? Um, I think we leave that one to the women to... Uh, you leave it to know. them? Yes. To deal with yes yes i see yes <laughs> talk to me about breastfeeding why okay. is it necessary okay so um first of all i want to say good morning to our viewers um, it's a very great morning to stay alive and also to live healthy um talking on breastfeeding um, this week that's from first august to seventh august um, it's been um, placed for breastfeeding awareness yes and then this month's um, team is step up for breastfeeding educate and then support so how do we educate the public especially the mothers who you already give no, projection to <laughs> you said we'll leave it for them so don't make it reference so you projected answer. already <laughs> that um, they are not uh, doing the best mm -hmm. on their children but rather giving it out mm. and then uh, we, we educate them more and then also um, let the public know how they can support because everybody here need to support um, to exclusive breastfeeding mm. for the mother. So Th there's, there's, there's a big talk about that particular one, exclusive breastfeeding. First of all, for the avoidance of doubt, break it down for people who are watching so they know what it means. Okay. People know, but let's, let's still go on before I, I further ask the other questions. Okay, okay. So um, I'll start by saying every child, every infant have the right to good nutrition. And then good nutrition it's the basic um, livelihood for children mm. or newborn because we know children have right to life so if they have the right to good nutrition that means they have the right to live or the right to life um and that nutrition has been associated with um, about 45 percent of newborn death and that's serious because if 45 percent of children or newborn couldn't um, have enough to eat or have adequate nutrition and they die then that's very serious for us to um, attend to so the world health organization other stakeholders come into play to bring up the exclusive breastfeeding and even at now um, by research done in 2020 um, about 44 percent of children enjoy exclusive breastfeeding just what 44 44 Yes, out of a hundred percent out of a hundred only 44 um are be able to enjoy this exclusive breastfeeding so that shows the lot of work that we need to do when it comes to breastfeeding so how, how what, what, what's the balance between i mean what the excuses are or reasons are one is that look we need to go to work i cannot carry the baby to work okay. And those are the periods where the baby has to be fed. Good. And so what do we do so that the babies are fed and we still achieve the result? Good. So um, we will be coming to the part where there are support groups and then also policies that are made by the World Health Organization and other stakeholders in place for um, these mothers to have adequate time yes or adequate duration to breastfeed mm -hmm. but before i get to them let me touch a little bit on the exclusive mm -hmm. breastfeeding so what exclusive or um exclusive breastfeeding means is that from the first day the child is born to sit month you should give solely breast milk the nutrition or the food for that child should solely be breast milk no water no other food no drink just breast milk because all the essential nutrients and the energy that the child needs to survive 
are in the breast milk. So that's where exclusive breastfeeding comes in place. Mm. Yes. So, but people, because of the time, they don't want to wait from um, zero to six months because they have other activities doing and then they don't engage in the exclusive breastfeeding. But then, exclusive breastfeeding is the best way to go if you want to one reduce the percentage that we have for undernutrition associating to child mortality or child death and also if we want to increase the percentage from 44 to maybe 90 100 for exclusive breastfeeding then we should um, keep up with the month from zero to six months i see yeah. so that's 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 the thing now let's let's just start on the the health industry as a whole ensuring that there's enough uh, of the breastfeeding happening that i'm sure will dovetail into whatever policy it is that you feel and what the the world uh, organizations are saying about it so help us understand what the support the health industry has to give okay so um for the support mm -hmm. that's from the health industry and also the community okay so um, the first one is the international labor organizations mothers protection convention um, that's one eight three it suggests that there should be longer duration for mothers to breastfeed and it's in place now so you realize that in industries and in companies when the mother has given birth you have some time um, mostly even more than six months to breastfeed and then have that engagement with their children so that they can have this exclusive breastfeeding also there are regulations for um, breast milk substitute because there are instances where the mother passed on mm. after birth or after giving birth to the child or sometimes too, there are a lot of medical issues that might come up that will prevent the mother from breastfeeding the child so there are regulation on the breast milk substitute that are to given or things that will replace the breast milk for the child mm. so there are regulation on it and then there are um, companies that are engaged in producing this breast milk substitute and then they are very verified to make sure they are giving similarly uh, energy requirements that the child will get mm. from the breast milk and then also there's this initiative known as um baby friendly hospital initiative so this baby friendly hospital initiative has been introduced with some key factors one is after birth or after delivery there should be skin to skin attachment or contact of the mother and the child and this helps to ensure or increase the bonding between the child and the mother also within the first hour after delivery the child should have a, a breast should be breastfed or should have the first breast milk within the first hour so after delivery and then the mother has been prepared and then the child has been placed on the mother for skin and skin contact within that first hour mm. breastfeeding should come in place the, because mm -hmm. the, the, there's this um first um, this breast milk that comes within the first three days we call it the cholesterol it's very 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 important for the immune system of the child mm. it serves as the immune protector for that child okay so if within the first three days the child didn't meet that cholesterol or you couldn't give the cholesterol to the child then that that, that comes to the play where there should be some substitute that will will not even replace the cholesterol but will try and then get the, the work of the cholesterol done i see so at, at some point where I, I was just watching a video on the the screen where the the breasts i mean the sore uh, on the nipple yes uh, two things the pain it, it brings to the mother yes and then could also cause infections yes. to the child yes. at, at, at that time what, what should happen Okay, so if the nipple has problems, we have, um, aside the child sucking on the breast, there are also mechanisms to also take the, uh, the breast milk and then prepare or um, store them for the child to feed on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are um, medical procedures that are there where you can store some breast milk for the child to feed on. I see. But if it's beyond the extraction maybe it's um, 
a medical condition whereby it even affects the breast milk that are being produced that's where the regulation comes in place to bring the breast milk substitute and then it should be a recommended one certified by the medical uh, um, body for the child i see there's also the issue of you see <laughs> so we talk about uh, health records yes. or health challenges and that's why some mothers cannot breastfeed their child that is the excuse others are also giving to want to rely on the complementary food to say that ah, of course if there's a trouble with a mother and they cannot and they would have to rely on the complementary ah, it's okay for me also to do same because the fact that the one with the problem would have the child also develop mind to can also develop that's okay. what is that not the case okay so this brings us to the importance of breastfeeding uh -huh. one to the child and then two to the mother mm -hmm. when the mother goes on exclusive breastfeeding the mother also enjoys some benefits but then that's what they don't know how is that good so for the mother going on exclusive breastfeeding that's from zero man to six months has the potential to reduce the risk of ovarian and breast cancer they don't know mm. yes ovarian cancer and breast cancer if you go on exclusive breastfeeding it helps to reduce the risk of those conditions also it serves as a way of spacing pregnancy so when the child when the mother is going on exclusive breastfeeding what happens is that it has some hormonal effect on the mother's menstrual cycle yes and this goes a long way to help the spacing of the pregnancy yeah so it's not all the hardness present but then um, usually we call it the um, lactation immunorrhea method yes so it's like a natural kind of birth control that is uh, the mothers enjoy you know you sometimes you see when you go to the villages or when you go to the um, rural areas you realize somebody is having a kid uh, maybe one year the next one you now start thinking what, what is the space in between these children mm -hmm. how long did they, did, they, yeah, did they breastfeed so exclusive breastfeeding also help the mother in that way I see. also it helps in bonding yes when you breastfeed your child mm -hmm. you're keeping your child to you it's, you develop that love for the child that, that child also develop that bond with you imagine always expressing breast milk giving breast milk substitute and not there maybe the one doing it the child will start calling that person mommy 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 instead of calling you the child instead of the child to have that personal bond with you as a mother the child would rather have the bond with the one who is always giving 